pretend that world of tomorrow with that ubiquitous, smart, automated operations framework striping across core and edge. If you were able to accomplish that, the next logical step is to kind of remove the operators completely out of the loop. If that was the case, operations become invisible. They're just a substrate underneath the infrastructure, regardless of whether it was in the core or the edge. And this opens up a wide area. There might be other forms of infrastructure that come about. Areas like human machine interface. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, I know the Borg and, and Matrix and everything. But really, we're, we're starting to see the advent of very advanced human machine interfaces. OK, what does that mean for a computer operations point of view? Um, do, do I want some service provider that I'm using to have their operations automatically reach out and patch the electronics that are interacting with my eye, for instance? Or what about you mentioned autonomous vehicles? You know, if we look into the future, uh, are we going to start managing autonomous vehicles as if they were nano data centers that are just very, very mobile? That's going to require the operations behind that to be completely invisible. It just has to work. Just like the electric grid is invisible. Oh, it's out there and there are people that do that. But to the consumer's point of view and the lines of business and the application's point of view, that will just become invisible. And that's exactly what we're looking at in the future. You know, when we see our customers, particularly customers that have a larger scale, they have all of these ideas for how to leverage the human capital that they have. Maybe they're a company that designs silicones and they've gone to all this uh, trouble and effort to come up with a specialization and hire scientists and whatever else around it. And um, what that cohort doesn't want is to have to think about how does the infrastructure that we have in place support whatever our business objectives are? How do we test things? How do we create assumptions? How do we go do whatever? And I love this idea of using the uh, operations tools and all the predictive analysis that you've described to allow that environment to accommodate and adapt to the things that are happening when, uh, when somebody who's a line of business owner how do yeah. we allow them to experiment and do it flexibly so that they can have, you know, a custom environment that allows them to take the most advantage of their other investments? And I just think it's utterly fantastic. Well, yeah, so luckily, the road to invisible ops is easy and straightforward. I think there's just like an invisible ops button now available on the front of servers. And you can just hit it and it, it all happens. Ah, ah. Is that what it says? Is that the blinking light? Is that what that's for? That's it's exactly blinking that. light, it's invisible ops? Yeah, it's it's like a cloaking device for IT operations. <laughs> well, you know, it, uh, every time I push one of those things that's blinking, it has a profound effect and it does have some result. I just don't know if it's the one that I wanted. Everything usually stops, Mark. Is that what's supposed to happen? Yeah, no, it's people like you that cause Chernobyl. I think I think that's how it works. But no, there's a ton of challenges to getting there. It's very easy to talk about operations becoming um, you know, invisible and things like preemptive procurement and the ubiquity of an ops framework striping across data center cloud and three levels of edge. Um, that's super easy to talk about, but there's some real world challenges to get there, not least of which is uh, security. 